Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm timeless photographer, cinematographer, and Sony artist Andrew Geraci. Today we're gonna to be talking about the magical world of 8K cinematography. And it's something that I've been doing for a long time now. If you haven't seen my work already, you may have seen it in Netflix, Showtime, or HBO. Uh, but I deal with 8K technology pretty much on a daily basis. I've been using it ever since uh, about 2015, 2016, when the uh, first A7R2 came out. And I've been dealing with 8K footage since then. And really, 8K footage allows you to go beyond the scope of what you're able to do um, right now. And it really, it's a huge leap forward in technology, especially when you compare it to 1080p and even 4K technology. So um, we're gonna have a really exciting day today, and we're just gonna jump right into it. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what 8K technology is, and then we're gonna show you how to shoot 8K footage, and then I'm gonna show you how to actually go into the post-production, um, how to set up your computer, how to set up your NLE, and then also how to process and edit that footage so that you can get the best possible quality so that you can upload it to YouTube or even uh, transmit it out to professional clients. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna talk about is what is 8K resolution? And 8K resolution, you might think, is just double the resolution of 4K, but actually it's four times the resolution of 4K, which means you're getting four times the amount of pixels, color, light, clarity, all of that within one single image, which it's really awesome. Um, but it also brings some caveats too when it comes to file size, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Here's an example of how 4K stacks up to 8K. As you can see in this example, 4K is actually quite a bit smaller than 8K resolution. And this is gonna open up a ton of different avenues when you get to 8K resolution because it's going to allow you to, and I'm gonna share this with you later on, um, how to recompose, how to re-edit and reframe in post-production so you can get the most out of your 8K frames. And really, it's really one of those things that really allows you to um, explore your creative avenues and come up with really fun and exciting things that you probably couldn't do if you were shooting 4K or even 1080p. When you actually view 8K content back on an 8K screen, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, you can actually put your face straight up to the monitor and see all of that detail up um, just a few inches away from your, uh, your face. And it's something that's really quite different from 1080p and 4K because um, while it's similar to 4K, the resolution and the detail and the quality is so much better in 8K technology. And with the release of Sony's new Alpha 1, you now have the ability to shoot 8K footage uh, that's 10-bit as well. Um, so it's gonna give you all that beautiful color, dynamic range, and resolution all in one package. Uh, so it's really amazing to see this kind of technology come to life finally um, in the Alpha camera lineup. When you are looking at it, you don't necessarily have to be inches away. You can be feet away, and you're still gonna see all of that amazing detail, uh, much like in these examples. Although these examples are 8K down sample to 4K, you're still being able to see a lot more detail, a lot more clarity, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So the next question is, why would anyone really want to shoot in 8K? I mean, 4K is great, 1080p is even good, and right now the standard for television broadcast is only 4K. Uh, that being said, you should really be thinking about the future because 8K is going to be standardized within the next few years. And with 8K technology it means that you're probably going to see a leap from 8K to even 12 and 16K. Uh, there are cameras out there that already shoot 8 or 12K footage, so you can already see how that leap has begun. Uh, but one of the benefits, really, of shooting 8K technology is that you can go through, recompose, re-edit, and reframe your shots, which is huge for editors, especially if you're someone who only works on a tripod, you're not using any kind of motion control devices, um, or you don't necessarily have the ability to do um, pan and tilt because you may not have a fluid head. Um, Using, utilizing 8K technology, it really allows you to go into post later on and then add those subtle movements, whether you want to push in, pull back, pan left, pan right, um, and add depth and feeling to your shot. This is one of the biggest benefits of using 8K technology. Um, and aside from that, the next biggest benefit is downsampling. For me, downsampling is the number one aspect to working with 8K footage because what it does is when you take that 8K footage, it literally compresses all of those pixels and all that resolution from 8K resolution down to 4K, but with it, it brings extra sharpness, crispness, um, color, and even a little added uh, dynamic range. Um, in some examples I've shot here, I've downgraded my 8K footage from the new Sony Alpha 1 down to 4K, and it actually reduces the noise when I'm shooting at higher ISOs above 12,800. Uh, in this example, you can see at 32,000 ISO, yes, I said 32,000 ISO, you can actually downsample the 8K footage um, to 4K, and it looks almost identical to that of the Sony a7S III, which is huge. Um, to be able to have low light technology in a camera like the Alpha One and be able to then downsample that 8K to 4K to actually utilize it on your timeline 
it's a huge deal. It really means that there's going to be a lot more uh, choice when it comes to how you're framing your shots and how you're editing and then how to bring that to life later on in post, whether you want to work on a 4K or even a 1080p timeline. If you take that 8K footage and bring it down to a 1080p timeline, you're going to get so much more data. It's going to look crisp. In some cases, that 1080p footage could actually even look better or as good as 4K footage when used or viewed on YouTube. You also get the added benefit of being able to go in, add and subtract more color from the scene because it's gonna take those pixels, whether it's the highlights, the shadows, or the midtone, and give you more information in those scenes. And that's really what's gonna help bring your scene to life and then ultimately give you a better color grade when it comes to post-production. Another benefit to using 8K footage is that you can use the same footage for multiple sequences and scenes. Uh, a lot of the times, and just like we were talking about recomposing to add pushes and zooms and whatnot, if you are editing on a 4K timeline, you can take multiple scenes from within one single clip and be able to create a sequence of shots um, that's really going to allow you to not have to worry about sequencing in the camera. Um, you can do the sequencing in post. So it really just opens up an entirely um, new dynamic for how you can edit your footage. And this is huge, especially for low budget productions where if you are shooting 8K and you don't necessarily have the time to shoot multiple cameras, you can then actually pick and choose the different spots um, within the frame and you can compose the frame so that you um, are composing for knowing that you are going to take multiple shots from the 8K resolution. Um, say you're setting up for an interview or you're setting up for a landscape shot and you want to be able to go from a very wide to a very tight, you can do that utilizing the 8K technology. And it's really brilliant. So what are some of the advantages of using the new Sony Alpha 1 when it comes to 8K resolution? For me, that's an easy answer because both the 8K resolution for the stills and the video match up in full frame. So it really allows me as a time-lapse cinematographer to go in and really start working with new um, and creative fun ways to edit footage. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be able to go in and create 8K still time lapses as well as 8K live action footage and then mesh and mold those two together to create kind of a, um, a new pseudo hybrid hybrid um, video format, which is pretty amazing. One of the things about the Alpha One that I really like is that it does have a ultra high ISO setting on it that um, looks absolutely beautiful when you bring it into post-production. I was shooting out in Washington, DC, and I was able to capture a lot of different sequences and scenes utilizing higher ISOs above 6,400. Um, in most cases, I was shooting at 12,800 or even 32,000 ISO, and the camera really allowed me to bring out that detail, show the scene as I see it with my eye, um, and in some cases, even more than what I can see with my eye, um, um, and it really allows you to then go into post-production and then bring out the, the mid-tones, those highlights and the shadows, um, and create something really fun and really magical. Uh, that I think this camera in itself is going to be super beneficial to anybody who's shooting uh, landscape or action, wildlife, um, or even you know small feature films or commercial productions. This is a great B cam to say the Sony FX9 or FX6, and in tandem working with the Sony A7S III, these cameras all create a really beautiful bundle that are going to allow you to do um, much more with your creative output um, than you can currently do with, with the systems that are out there. So being able to utilize that 8K technology for other things other than just 8K, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. So um, I know for myself, I'm gonna be adding this camera to my arsenal. Um, but at the same time, I'm adding it because I need 8K. Everything that I do in my production really revolves around high resolution content, um, whether that's through photo stills or through the actual live action video footage. But being able to have both of those helping me as a cinematographer, um, it's really gonna elevate my craft and allow me to do more um, with less, in all honesty. So being able to have this technology is just a huge benefit for anyone that's actually shooting professionally right now. So we've talked a little bit about what 8K technology is. Let's get to shooting 8K. And you might think that shooting 8K isn't that different from shooting 4K or 1080p, but there are some things that you really have to think about when you're shooting because that 8K sensor really picks up every little thing that you do. So um, let's just go ahead and start talking about it. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna mount your camera to a fluid motion head on your tripod. You want a head that's very smooth, very silky, um, so that when you are moving it, you're not picking up any jitters or jolts or vibration. Because with 8K footage, um, that resolution is gonna pick up every little dink, dent, um, and anything in between, uh, and it's gonna show you that on that, uh, on that live action footage playback. So you really wanna make sure that you're creating the smoothest motion that you can when you're doing any kind of pans or tilts um, or even slider motions because this camera will pick up any and all vibrations. 
And that's a big thing you have to worry about too when shooting um, 8K resolution footage is keeping focus. Um, you might think that it's pretty simple to keep focus, but with all those pixels that are out there, um, it really can be difficult sometimes to gauge if your shot is either in focus or slightly out of focus or slightly in focus. Um, so you really wanna make sure that you use an external monitor for you to actually zoom in and check that focus. I recommend using focus peaking, um, the Sony Alpha 1, as well as the other Alpha cameras, the A7S III and the A7R IV. They all come with focus peaking, and focus peaking is really crucial to put on because it's gonna give you an outline of where your focus is. And that's super important because once you see those highlights um, pick up and the, the focus is there, you know that the content that you're shooting um, is likely in focus. Now, sometimes there are issues where um, it can be slightly out of focus, but when you are shooting with an 8K resolution, there's a little bit of leeway when it comes to what it can do in post. So as long as you're, uh, let's just say 99% in focus, you should be good to go. That being said, Always make sure that you check your critical focus, um, either by manually zooming in on the lens uh, inside the camera and checking, or uh, by using an external monitor. Another thing that I like to do when it comes to focus is actually taking the camera out of uh, video mode and going into photo mode, because photo mode, for some reason, gives you a much clearer, much crisper um, view of the scene and allows you to really dial in that focus. So what I'll normally do is I'll go outside of my video mode, go straight into photo mode, zoom in, and then find the subject that I'm looking at, and then go to my critical focus. Um, and once I get back, I actually switch back to video, and then I know that what I'm shooting is 100% in focus. So that's a quick little tip. The other thing you can do is make sure that you have IAF turned on. If you're tracking any kind of human subjects or even animal subjects, IAF on your camera is gonna be your best friend. Uh, I've been doing some tests with the new Sony Alpha 1 with IAF, and it works absolutely beautifully. Uh, you can actually track your subject forward, backwards, left, right, any which way you're, they're coming, and you're going to, I would say at least 95% of the time, um, get 100% focus uh, for the subject that you're shooting. And sometimes if there's any kind of foreground objects, there can be some um, back and forth with the focus. But overall, I just love using the IAF, especially for uh, when it comes to people and animals. And it's really gonna give your scene that sense of a cinematic feel, because rather than having to have a focus puller with you that's manually looking and pulling the focus at the same time. The camera's gonna do that all for you at the same time. You can also use the back tracking pad on the camera um, to actually select your subject and the camera will actually track it as long as it stays within the scene. So that's another really cool feature that I really like and it pairs really well with AK technology because you really always wanna make sure that the stuff you're shooting is in focus. And obviously that goes for anything, whether you're shooting 1080p, 4K, um, or 8K. And this also works really well in the still division. So um, the next time you go out shooting, think about turning on that IAF, whether it's for human or for animal, uh, and really kind of take advantage of the technology that's uh, been put in front of you. One of the last things when it comes to creating beautiful 8K resolution live action footage is the framing. Um, I would always typically say if you are shooting, it's wise to actually back out a little bit and create a slightly wider frame. Um, that way when you get into post-production, you're gonna have that ability to then recompose and readjust. And it's really a benefit to you as the editor because you may not realize that what you're shooting is you know, too high in resolution or too low in resolution. So if you back out just a little bit, you're gonna have that latitude to change it later on in post and really compose and frame it to how it's going. Let's say you're shooting a subject and the subject goes out of frame because you're too tight, but if you do frame a little bit wider back, um, you'll be able to capture that action and then keep it in the scene, uh, which is really beneficial. And then you can adjust the camera um, inside of post, which I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, but this way, it continues to um, utilize and leverage that 8K resolution against a 4K timeline. It's gonna give you more creative control overall. Now, we've been talking a lot about live action footage when it comes to the new Sony Alpha 1, uh, but that doesn't mean you have to use the new Sony Alpha 1 to shoot 8K footage. Um, I've been shooting 8K footage, again, for the last six or seven years, um, just depending on what camera I'm using. Um, but if you are using a camera that's using at least 40 megapixels or above, you're gonna be able to um, accommodate still photography for 8K resolution, and this can come in the, the form of of, uh, stop motion or in time-lapse footage and time-lapse is huge because it allows you to kind of bridge the gap between both still photography and video so if you haven't really gotten into video time-lapse photography is a great way to kind of jump in there and start doing it because you'll still compose the same way as you do for photos but you're gonna be thinking about all of that motion and everything that's happening in the scene and then turning that into a sequence of images that you'll then 
uh, turn into motion. And uh, if you're able to capture that in 8K resolution, you'll be able to do the exact same thing you can do what we're talking about with live action footage and then downsample that 8K down into 4K and create really beautiful, super crisp, um, ultra buttery scenes. And that's ultimately gonna help bring the quality of your work up because the higher the re resolution you have, the more color depth you have, the more ability you're going to have to um, shape it and mold it to what it is that you want. Um, or it's gonna allow your clients to shape and mold it to whatever they want. So there's a lot of different give and takes here, but you don't necessarily have to have, again, a full live action 8K video camera to actually capture and create 8K content. So that's just a little food for thought. Now that we've captured our content, we're gonna start working in our NLE or nonlinear editing system. And for me, there's really only one editor out there right now that works really well with high resolution content and that's DaVinci Resolve. Uh, you can use programs like uh, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro or even Final Cut Pro, but I will say after utilizing them for a couple of years, trying to get them to get to that 8K footage range, you're gonna have a lot of stuttered playback um, or no playback at all, um, or the inability to actually um, see the composition playback in real time, which is really crucial when it comes to you know, watching your 8K footage. So I would recommend if you do have it, go out and get DaVinci Resolve. There's a free version and there's a studio version. The studio version is going to allow you to shoot um, and edit within 8K um, parameters, whereas the free version only allows you to go up to 4K. Um, so with that being said, I would recommend going with the studio version, and that's really going to allow you to open up those 8K files and really get to work. What are some of the challenges when it comes to actually utilizing 8K footage? Well, as I said before, you may encounter stuttered playback or no playback at all or drop frames um, or just the inability to see your footage being played back live in 8K if you don't have the right system resources. And 8K system resources are crucial when you actually want to play back your content in real time. So here's my list of what I would suggest utilizing uh, if you're building a computer or if you have a computer. Um, these are probably going to be the minimum specs to actively run um, the 8K H.265 footage um, back inside of DaVinci Resolve. You're going to need at least a, a 10 gigabit graphics card. I'd recommend the 2080 Ti um, as the bare minimum. And if you have the ability, the new RTX 3090 is the way to go. The, the new RTX 3090 is 24 gigs of video RAM and really allows you to have that buffer that the 8K frames take up. And that's ultimately going to allow you to play that footage back in real time. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have um, a good multi-core processor. Anywhere from eight cores all the way up to 18 cores is probably gonna be your sweet spot. The higher core count you have, the faster it's gonna be able to process that imagery um, and the playback. So just think about that when you're shooting. You also wanna think about the gigahertz that you're using. Somewhere in the lower um, two to 3.5 gigahertz will not run as fast as somewhere say in the four to five gigahertz range. Um, but if you do have more cores, then you may be able to um, counterbalance that. You also want to make sure that you're using NVMe SSD. This is going to allow the footage to play back at the proper bitrate, whether you choose the 200 or 400 megabit bitrate. The NVMe SSDs are super crucial because it's going to allow you to transfer data to and from the disk to the NLE uh, much faster and much more uh, quickly than you would if you're using even a standard SSD or a hard drive. So think about that when you're doing it. Now, a lot of people, when they get the new camera uh, that shoots AK, think that they're instantly gonna be able to play that, and that's definitely not the case. Make sure you have the system specs that match the playback for 8K, and then also make sure that you have the correct amount of storage. 180 gig CF Express A card uh, gives you exactly 53 minutes of 8K footage. And if you pair that, you know, let's just say like five or six projects, you're going to end up having a full terabyte um, in just a few um, you know, days, if not weeks of shooting. So you really wanna make sure that you have a good um, NAS or DAS system uh, set up, and that's a network attached storage or direct attached storage. And that's going to allow you to store all of this data because the files are huge. And the more 8K content you shoot, the larger volume of drives you're going to need. So I really recommend starting off with at least 32 terabytes of hard drive space. And that's gonna probably, if you're just kind of a casual shooter for 8K, that'll probably last you for a year or two. Um, but if you do intend on using 8K more regularly and using it in a lot of different productions or just you know for the, every single production you wanna use, then I really would recommend going from that 64 all the way up to 120 terabytes. And if you even expect more than that, go beyond that. Uh, for myself, I have just about 1.5 petabytes 
um, at the moment for all of my 8K footage, but I do shoot a ton of 8K footage. So think about that though when you are setting up for 8K resolution because data management is going to be huge and you really wanna make sure that you have enough space and enough hard drive um, capacity to warrant all the footage that you're creating. So let's go ahead and jump inside of DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna show you how you can start processing your 8K footage uh, when it comes to both uh, readjusting and recomposing as well as color grading and then exporting that beautiful 8K footage out. Let's take a look. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve 16 or 17, depending on which version you're using. And then we're gonna go ahead and find our 8K footage. I'm gonna be using the Sony Alpha 1 footage that I captured earlier this month. And I'm gonna be using it to show you how to import, process, and then export that beautiful 8K footage. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and gone through and located where my footage is. Um, over here you can see on the right hand side that this is 8K footage. And uh, I've shot it at a frame rate of 23.976, which is pretty close to a 24p timeline. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the settings that we're using match that of our footage. So I'm gonna go down here to the right hand side where there's a little gear tog and it says project settings. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, open this open and under master settings, You'd think that you'd want to go to the 8K Ultra HD, uh, but for what I want to show you guys for the best playback performance is we actually just want to use a standard 1080p timeline. So go ahead and click the standard uh, 1920 by 1080 p timeline, and then we're going to change our frame rate from 24 to match that of our footage, which is 23.976. After that, we're going to go down to our color management, and this is also really important. Depending on what picture mode you're shooting in, you could be shooting in HDR or standard definition. Um, for us, uh, everything that was shot here is in HDR um, using uh, S-Log3, so we're going to go ahead and change this um, color timeline from Rec. 709 and actually choose the S-Log that matches that that I was shooting on, which would be the S-Gamut 3, S-Log3. Go ahead and click that. I will click Save. So I've got a couple different videos over here. I'm just gonna use this first one here and I'm going to drag it down into my media clip pool and that's going to automatically import it. It's gonna remember the location that the footage is at, but it's also gonna allow us to uh, play back and find the footage later if we need to. Um, next, I'm gonna pull another scene in and I'm gonna choose this scene as well. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and go over to our edit tab and then I'm gonna select that first one we had. I'm gonna double click it. That's gonna open up a preview. You can see that the image here is mildly flat here and that's because of the that we're shooting in S-Log3. Um, but that's great because it's gonna give us a lot of opportunity to pull in those colors, um, increase the saturation, and also um, really allow you to get more information out of this shot. And using the Sony Alpha 1, you're gonna have a lot of options to work with because it is a 10-bit color space. So that means that we can pull out more information than was actually seen here. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to do that right off the bat. The first thing we're gonna do just for our coloring is we're gonna go in, select this, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose color. And then under the color tab, especially when shooting with S-Log3, um, it's great to work with um, both um, the uh, highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I'm gonna start with my highlights here and over on the right hand side where I have my parades, what we really wanna do is we wanna maximize the range that we have here from zero all the way up to 1023. So I'm gonna bring the offset down so that we can get those colors right on the, the line there. And then I'm also going to increase my highlights a bit. You're gonna notice that my image is starting to take shape gonna reduce the midtones just a little bit, but not too much. And then also reduce the shadows because I wanna bring them down into the uh, the lower areas. But since we are going past that, as you can see in the parade, I'm gonna bring that offset back up and then bring my highlights down a little bit so they're not clipping. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and increase um, some of my midtone detail. And if I go ahead and zoom in here, this is an 8K image, so even though we're on a 1080p timeline, we're still going to be able to see this in full 8K. Decrease my shadows just a little bit. And then increase the contrast. And that's really going to make this image pop. So now when I zoom out, we're going to have this really beautiful shot here. And I will go ahead and increase my color boost just a little bit. This is going to happen after the fact. So we get a really nice, beautiful, colorful image. And you can see, since we are in a 1080p timeline, even though we're using 8K footage, 
um, I should be able to play this back in real time. And as you look right up here in the left-hand corner, this little green dot indicates that it is playing back in real time, and we are playing back at a frame rate of 23.976, which is what you want to have. If you don't have all of the, the right system specs, if you're not using the right GPU um, or a powerful enough GPU or enough CPU power, um, you're going to notice those numbers drop, and that's going to give you um, frame stutter and uh, degraded playback. So we don't really want that to happen. So if I were to zoom in here, and we do 100% playback. We can see that everything is moving. It looks really beautiful. It's just super detailed. And working with 8K footage really gives you the latitude to um, do a lot more with just a single frame, as I talked about earlier. So if you want to, here's the before, or here's the after, and here's the before. And you can see just how that S-log um, takes shape once we're into the, uh, the coloring window. And it really just gives you a very nice um, color palette to work with here. And that's one of the reasons why I love working with 10-bit footage, especially on the new Sony Alpha 1 and even the a7S III. Um, they both give you really um, beautiful palettes to work off of and gives you a lot more creative possibilities for the content that you're creating. So this is just a very simple grade. I'm not going to go too much deeper into that. But the next thing I want to talk about is what we uh, had talked about before, and that's creating multiple scenes within a single scene. So as you can see here, I'm uh, backed out all the way. This is full frame. Um, but we are viewing this on a 1080p timeline, so what I can do over here in the zoom is I can increase this all the way up to two times the amount of resolution and maintain that. So if I were to do this, we can play this back, and then say I wanted to zoom in just to this little quadrant right here in the center. I'm going to go ahead and create a cut, and then in my next frame here, I'm going to zoom in. Remember that 2.0 is going to be my maximum before it re removes the... Uh, before it starts getting hazy. And now if I come in here and play this back, we've got a nice little two window sequence where we can go from a wide to an ultra tight. So I'm playing this back. Let's just start that here. Playing it back and then we zoom in. But there's absolutely no loss in image quality because we're shooting 8K on a 1080p timeline. So what you do have to remember though is you can't necessarily export a full 8K um, readout if you are um, doing any kind of pushes or pulls or additional camera movements. Um, that being said, if you are working in a 1080p timeline or a 4K timeline, you're going to be able to zoom in um, at least twice, if not four times the amount, that way that you can actually uh, move around and reconfigure, recompose, um, and then reset up your shots, which it's really nice to do, and one of the reasons why I love using 8K footage. Um, so that's just one quick little thing. I'm going to use this scene here because, um, and I did use this earlier in the video, Video that you just watched. Um, this is a picture of me walking, but I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and create a nice little zoom in off of that. I'm going to find a good spot. Play back there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this down into my timeline. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do here is I want to make this a little bit larger but I want the the first part to be wide and then the second part I want it to zoom in directly on my face and I'm gonna go ahead since I know that I walk from left to right I wanna go ahead and set the camera movement up so that it captures me as I'm walking over into this area so as that's happening I'm gonna zoom in remember I can go all the way up to 2.0 before the image starts to degrade I'm gonna reposition I'm going to recompose so I can see a little bit more of myself walking. And now if I play this back, this is the 8K to 4K. And there we go. And then I can pop back if I want to. We can just reset all of these numbers. And now if I play it, I'm walking, I'm cutting in. And then I'm walking back. And this is all from the same shot. So you don't have to set up multiple cameras. You don't have to do uh, different camera angles. You can you go ahead and use the AK frame to create a beautiful two-shot sequence or even a three-shot sequence. If you wanted to do some uh, wide, medium, or tights, we could also capture these birds in the sky if we wanted to um, as a cutaway and then back to the action of me walking. But that's just the beauty of using 8K footage on lower resolution timelines, whether you're using 4K or 1080p. But let's just go ahead and say that we want to uh, export this as a full true 8K image. Let's go ahead and revert all of these back to uh, their standard uh, 8K clips. And I'm just going to come through here, reset everything. If I scrub through, everything should be fine. 
But exporting 8K is very similar to that of exporting anything else, but we want to make sure that our timeline settings are correct. So as we had done before, down in the bottom right hand corner, I had gone ahead and set up our master settings at 1080p. So if I were to render this right now, it would only render at 1080p. So we're going to go ahead and switch this from 1080p all the way to 8K Ultra HD and then click Save. And one of the main reasons why we do this is because you wanna make sure that you have the best playback and the best ability to edit the footage that you're creating. And utilizing it on an 8K timeline isn't necessarily beneficial because uh, for one, most people aren't even using 8K monitors to um, edit with, and two, um, you're not really gonna see a big difference in the actual quality of the work. So if you downsample it from 8K uh, to 4K or 8K to 1080p, you're gonna have that latitude to go ahead and work with, make edits, do color correction and then at the end when you're ready to actually export as 8k you can go back and change the timeline to 8k and that's really one of the the greatest benefits to utilizing um, a program like davinci resolve <clears throat> because you can change those timeline settings at any point in time so it's it's really wonderful um, so as you can see here i'm back in the 8k timeline i even now i can actually zoom in all the way in and have all this beautiful detail um, that we're seeing and we are in our true um, file format. Now I am using a RTX 3090 which is from NVIDIA and this should play it back beautifully at 2397 in real time uh, and there you go as you can see right there so we are getting full playback in our 8k timeline um, utilizing these um, system specs but again if you are using slower spec graphics cards or processors or just a standard hard drive or SSD you're likely going to have stuttered playback and uh, an inability to actually play these files back at full resolution so always important to remember that you should have or use um, the best system specs that you can we can also go up to preferences go to memory and GPU we want to make sure that we're using the most amount of memory that we can because uh, if you're using high resolution footage it's going to eat up a ton of RAM um, and we also if you want to go ahead and select the GPU that you're using some people may have integrated GPUs others may have um, external ones like I'm using right now and this is what's going to allow us to really process that AK imagery um, at its fullest so just make sure that all of this information is um, correct and to the point um, I'd also recommend using CUDA cores over metal or um, OpenCL as CUDA is probably the most preferred method when it comes to rendering um, imagery. If you are using a Macintosh computer, you probably won't have the ability to use CUDA, um, but Metal would be your next best option. Okay, so from that we'll click Save. And now we're ready to export our 8K imagery. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to Deliver. And then it's important to know that you, if you are delivering 8K, it's best to use the H.265 codec, especially if you're going to something like YouTube or Vimeo or just any kind of online social media. This is going to allow you to really preserve um, a lot of the information in your scene uh, without actually losing too much data. Um, I, I leave all these settings alone. Um, you can, if you want to, you can restrict the, um, the quality a little bit. So we're shooting at 80,000 kilobytes per second, which is an 80 megabit um, bit rate. Um, you could do half of that and still uh, maintain a pretty decent quality, but you would notice the difference um, if you're looking at on an actual 8K monitor. So I'm going to leave this alone because I am viewing this on an 8K monitor. And then everything else will stay the same. And the next thing you want to do is just give it a nice little title. 8K export. Choose a location you want to send it to. I'm just going to send it straight to my desktop. Add to my render queue and then click render all. And really depending on what your system specs are, again, this could take anywhere from just a few minutes um, all the way up to a few hours, just depending again on your system resources. And as you can see here, we're rendering this pretty quickly, um, about 40 seconds of footage. It should be done in under a minute, I would say. Um, so it's almost rendering this at a one-to-one -one, um, time frame, which is really great. And um, even though the H.265 codec that we're using with the Sony Alpha 1 is a long GOP format, uh, which means that you will get stuttered playback um, and that it's a little harder to process you're going to be able to render it quite quickly if you do have the right system resources. And that's pretty much the whole process from start to finish. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can do in between, especially with color, VFX, and editing. Um, but this is going to be your basic approach on how to edit, process, and deliver 8K footage. That's going to do it for today. I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Sony for sponsoring this video. Without them, I couldn't do what I'm doing today. So again, big thanks to them. And if you guys have any questions, put them down below in the comments. And as always, if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and as always, happy shooting. Thanks for joining me, everyone.